In July 2020, the fashion industry turned upside down as thousands upon thousands of people stormed to Twitter, Instagram, and other social media platforms to criticize one of the biggest and most successful fashion companies in the world. After all, what this big yet secretive fashion company had done in the name of profit was simply unthinkable. For instance, Shane, the Chinese fast fashion company, had listed on its website a swastika pendant necklace. Needless to say, people started questioning Shane's credibility and political ideologies. A few days later, one representative of the company issued an apology and said that the swastika represented in the necklace was not the Nazi swastika, but rather the Buddhist swastika. However, since this was just one of the missteps in their long list of screw-ups, most people didn't believe them. But we are getting ahead of ourselves. If you want to understand why Shane is arguably the worst fashion company in the world, you must first understand the murky story of its inception and its questionable business practices. So stay tuned, because that's exactly what we will be talking about in this video. Now, Shane is a highly successful Chinese fashion brand based on the concept of fast fashion. In case you don't know, fast fashion brands pride themselves on producing and selling clothing lines with extremely short life cycles. Thus, going from catwalk to customers and then ultimately to the trash can in a matter of only a few weeks. And as such, there are dozens upon dozens of new items popping up every day, but just as much falling out of fashion. The company was founded by Chris Xu way back in 2008. At the time, he was nothing more than an internet marketing specialist, and he was lucky enough to see the birth and development of most online marketing techniques that today are considered industry standard. And since he was living and breathing this topic, he quickly saw the opportunity of capitalizing on the gigantic e-commerce market, which at the time was completely undeserved. Back then, Shane used to serve its customers using the dropshipping business model. That is, the company would receive orders from the customers and then forward these same orders to other cheaper suppliers that could handle the shipping and production processes. Turns out that this business model allowed Shane to grow and scale practically overnight, since its only job was to find customers and it could delegate the supply process entirely. The only problem was that profit margins using the dropshipping business model are abysmal, and if Shane wanted to continue growing, it would have to get into the production process as well. And it wasn't until 2013, five years after its inception, that the company decided to widen its profit margins and create its very own product lines. But here is where things start to get shady for this seemingly unsuspecting company. For instance, Shane has been accused of stealing proprietary designs several times already since its inception. They probably have done it in order to shrink their production process, expand their profit margins, or simply make sure that their products would be well received by the customers. But the fact remains that they blatantly copied high-end fashion items from brands such as Levi Strauss, Ralph Lauren, and Dr. Martin, just to name a few. In fact, they used to sell some of these proprietary designs, which would cost more than $300 on their original stores for less than $20 on their website. And it is not only high-end luxury designers that they steal designs from, but also from independent up-and-coming designers. So as you can see, as long as they think the design is worth copying, they will do it with no shame or reservations. Fast forward to today, Shane has definitely earned its spot on the top of the fashion industry. They are the most downloaded e-commerce app in the US, even more so than Amazon, eBay, and Walmart. They make more than $10 billion in yearly revenue, are valued at a whopping $30 billion, and are about to get listed on some of the biggest and most renowned stock exchanges in the world. What's more, they are also quickly expanding their operations to the entire world, and today they already sell to people in all of the five continents. As you can see, Shane's growth has been exponential, and some have even dubbed it as the TikTok of e-commerce. Now, to the unsuspecting person, it may all look like nothing but the result of years of hard work. But in actuality, one could argue that it is in fact the result of their questionable business practices. Starting with their shady marketing practices, which we will expand upon and expose them fully on the next video, so stay tuned for that one. But for now, suffice to say that their marketing methods silenced bad customer reviews, complaints, and anything else that could portray the company in a bad light. Now, the importance of their questionable marketing methods cannot be overstated, 
After all, there are thousands upon thousands of customer complaints regarding delivery, customer service, and the quality of the items bought. Some customers have even compared the company to a lottery. After all, you never know what you'll be getting out of your order. And if most people had access to reliable information about the company before buying, I am sure many of them would never have bought in the first place. To be fair, if bad product quality and unreliable customer service were the only complaints made about Shane, everything would be fine and well. However, there are a lot more sinister and shadowy things that this secretive Chinese e-commerce company is trying to sweep under the rugs, starting with their production processes. Now, it is worth noting that Shane is really secretive about its supply chain and production process, so nobody besides those closely involved with its operations know much about it. But the little that we do know is already disturbing to say the least. For instance, dozens of international advocacy groups are saying that the treatment Shane's workers have to endure is akin to modern slavery. After all, workers have to work 15 hours in overcrowded workshops and can only take one day off per month. To make matters worse, it was reported that workers are paid pennies on the dollar for each item they produce, and there is enormous pressure from the top management for them to abide by unrealistically strict deadlines. And so most of them have to cope with the insane work hours or else go back to unemployment and total poverty. And on top of that, several complaints have arisen saying that Shane employs children in third world countries under these same cruel working conditions. Now, a Shane representative said they have no control over how the subcontractors treat their workers and that it is they who should be held responsible. They also say they always abide by local laws when it comes to child labor. But if you consider that some of the countries they have workshops on have weak and practically non-existent labor laws, you will realize that there may be children enduring hostile working environments anyway. As you can see, that's probably the reason why Shane goes to great lengths to keep its production operations far away from the public spotlight, or else they would face severe backlash. And I am sure that if we dig deeper, we will find even more questionable procedures. Unfortunately, mistreating its workers is not the only questionable thing about Shane's business procedures. After all, it seems like the business doesn't even care about what their products represent, or their only concern is selling tons of products no matter what. For instance, they have recently suffered a backlash from the Muslim community for selling a praying mat as a decoration item. In case you don't know, the Muslim faith does not allow for praying mats to be used as decoration, since it is one of the holiest and most sacred items of the religion. They have also been accused of racism and plagiarism for selling a phone case with a black man handcuffed on the design. And only after thousands of people stormed on Twitter did they remove the item from the website's listing and apologize to the creator of the design. The company later tried to justify itself, saying that the art was created by a black artist after the murder of Michael Brown, an unarmed young man who was shot and killed by a police officer to support the Black Lives Matter movement and fight against police oppression. However, most people didn't believe them. And what is perhaps the most disturbing example of Shane's disregard for what their products represent, it is that they used to sell a swastika necklace. Needless to say, they suffered a severe backlash on the internet from the Jewish community, online influencers, and even loyal customers of the company. A Shane representative later said they took down the necklace from the site's listing and it was meant to be the Buddhist swastika, which is associated with good fortune, not the Nazi swastika, which is closely associated with white supremacy and prejudice against most minority groups. But it is hard to know if the rep was telling the truth or not. Now, I realize that some people are not at all concerned about the screw-ups of a company as long as they are not the ones on the short end of the stick. However, when it comes to Shane, you simply can't tell if you are going to be unaffected by their wrongdoings. For instance, an investigation found out that the levels of toxic chemicals on some items sold by Shane were shockingly excessive. In fact, in more than a dozen of samples, there was more than 20 times the maximum allowed amount of toxic chemicals, especially lead. In case you don't know, lead is a neurotoxic chemical compound that when present in high amounts, can lead to convulsions, nausea, dementia, and even death, especially in children, which happen to be the target market for most of the items tested. Shane later recalled the products and issued, once again, a long and verbose apology. 
What's more, Shane doesn't seem to treat the data of its millions of customers with much seriousness. A few years ago, a hacker invaded Shane's database and stole millions of personally identifiable information from customers, most notably their email addresses and passwords. To make matters worse, the company only noticed the attack months after the data breach occurred, which means the hacker had plenty of time to do whatever he wanted with the data. Once again, Shane apologized for the error. The only problem is that their list of apologies is getting so long that I doubt that people take them seriously anymore. So much so that some countries have already decided to ban the Shane app, the most notable one being India, which banned the app over national security concerns and is unlikely to unban it anytime soon. And even though Indian users can still bypass this ban by using a few workarounds, Shane's bottom line has taken a huge hit after the ban. Now, as you can see, Shane's list of questionable business practices is very long. But none of that would be possible if they didn't use effective and sometimes deceptive marketing methods, which unfortunately has social media influencers holding the bad end of the stick. And that's exactly what we will be talking about in depth in the next video, so stay tuned for that one. But before you head to the next video, I want to hear from you. What surprised you the most about Shane's business practices? Let me know in the comment section down below. And that's all for today's video. See you soon. Bye.